So yeah, trade rumors are a little weird right now, so let's dive into it. Real quick, shout out to Isaac Okoro, who's been better from three. I should have mentioned that when I was talking about the Cavs in my Eastern Conference video. Anyway, I am going to go right to D'Angelo Russell, because there is something with D'Lo right now. Shams had a thing recently where he said, Minnesota has been exploring trade possibilities for Russell while prioritizing another point guard. D'Lo also had a quote recently. This one came from Jake Fisher where he said, you either take advantage of me or you mess up the opportunity with me. It's as simple as that. There was that report that was, I don't know, feels like a month ago now that mentioned the heat with Russell, but even that report was kind of vague and I don't know if it's really gone anywhere since then. And of course, the other big part of this is that Delo's on a one-year deal and if you try to search for how it's going with the contract extension talks, there doesn't seem to be anything suggesting that he and the Wolves are super close to coming to an agreement. And so then you're forced into this spot where it's like, well, you can't let him walk for nothing because... Even if he was gone, they still don't have enough cap space to then get like a really good player after him because they're still pretty expensive with Rudy and Towns' contracts and all that. And so then it becomes, okay, so what's up with this extension? Or, I mean, what we're seeing where there's trade chatter about the guy, basically. Of course, they can agree to something later on. It's not like if they don't extend him by the deadline, then he's guaranteed to be out. And as far as how D'Lo has looked recently, so... I mean, his last one against the Raptors, he had like four catch-and-shoot threes in the fourth, including one where he was moving off ball while Edwards was driving. That was kind of interesting. He also had this nice little handoff action with Kyle Anderson to get him going downhill. Uh, Anderson, that is. D'Lo and Ant have been basically tied in touches per game for a minute now as they've been giving Anthony Edwards more uh, just on-ball reps. Kyle Anderson has also been getting the ball more recently, and I think in a game like they just had against the Nuggets where D'Lo... You know, a lot of the time he was getting off the ball early and just kind of flowing within the offense. The game before that against the Jazz, like, he had six buckets. Three of them were threes. Only one of them was a pull-up. The other two were catch-and-shoots. He had a couple transition buckets, and then he had this one really cool cut play from Kyle Anderson at the elbow. They're just not asking D'Lo to run everything in this offense, pretty much, right? He's having his most efficient season, and as far as his passing... It's kind of awkward with D'Lo because he is a good passer. I mean, he can bust out, like, really nice swing passes and... You know, he was having more lobs to go bare before Rudy went down, which, I mean, this team has dealt with injuries. You know, Cat's been out for a while. Rudy had a four-game stretch where he was looking better, and they were finding him on his dives to the rim and all that, but then he got hurt. You know, D'Lo can bust out these really good passes, but then he also has these possessions where, because he's not like John ja Morant or De'Aaron Fox or super fast with the ball, basically, he just sometimes freezes a possession where he'll try to beat his guy and he can't get past him and he's got to swing it to somebody and... Basically, just like six or seven seconds went off the clock and nothing happened. So he's just always kind of been an awkward player in that regard. I feel like Mike Conley has been the most popular imagine what this would look like trade. And I think Shams even mentioned Mike Conley a little bit. There's also reports that straight up say the Wolves are interested in Mike Conley. So there you go, I guess. Look, Conley, he would shoot the ball less than D'Lo. He would be probably the most adult person on the team. He's already developed chemistry with Gobert because of his time with the Jazz. And again, the Wolves, they had moments of really doing that recently, and then Rudy got hurt, and that was that. And he's been just one of the best passers in the league this season, period. But he's 35, and so that's the big fear there. On top of, what would the Jazz want for him? This is assuming that they would even want to trade him, which I, I haven't even really seen anything suggesting that, but if it would be a possibility. And I don't even know if the Jazz would want D'Lo. And I guess this can bring me back to D'Lo specifically, like, he's going to want a good amount of money. And anybody who acquires him, I mean, you're going to have to be thinking that you're going to re-sign him, right? Why else would you trade for him when he's on a one-year deal? There's also the fact of a lot of teams are decently set at the backcourt spots, or they don't have the assets to acquire D'Lo. I mean, that's the other thing, right? Like, if the Wolves are going to want a impact player back in this whole thing, then that, that's just going to make it even tougher. Which is why, like, you typically see Conley or Lowry is the other one talked about with him a lot. And, I mean, Lowry's even older than Conley is, so I don't know. But, you know, that Miami d thing was there for a minute. Anyway, let's move on to uh, the Raptors. And we do have some information about them right now. Specifically from the uh, Toronto Star, where it says, uh, The asking price for Ananobi is two promising young players and a first-round pick. And uh, Van Vliet, they say it actually might exceed that for Van Vliet. I think Gary Trent Jr. has been rumored as well. Look, we all know Scotty Barnes is not getting traded. I would be shocked if Siakam got moved. 
I don't think I would be shocked if OG got traded, but I would be like pretty decently surprised, I guess. Even if he is the template of the player that every single team in the league could use. And then you got Fred and you got uh, Gary Trent Jr. Fred is interesting. I mean, his three-point shooting has been worse this season. I would like to point out he has been on a very good three-game stretch. We'll give him that one. But uh, look, he was never a dominant within the three-point line scorer, so the three ball had to make up for that, and it usually did. This season hasn't been the same for him. He's also been worse for mid-range this year as well compared to last season. As far as teams linked to Fred, it's just the Magic and the Suns right now, and even then, those are more so talked about for free agency if he declines his player option at $22 million, as opposed to them trading for him now, but I guess if you really, really want a guy, that's the way to do it. But, you know, for those two teams, like Phoenix is two games below 500. I know Devin Booker's hurt. But when you get to that point, I think it gets tougher to consider moving picks, even if they have all their future picks. And in the case of Orlando, they definitely should not be considering moving any draft pick. And then as far as who I could even picture them moving, I mean, Fultz is good. I don't really see a reason to move him. I'd rather just stick with Jalen Suggs as, as opposed to trading him for like a nearly 30-year-old. So I don't know. I don't have a whole lot with those two, but those are the rumored teams for Fred right now. There's been some Gary Trent Jr. stuff, if I didn't mention that already. Let's go on to this Jakob Pertl thing where the Celtics were rumored, which made me go, huh, a little bit. I just think with Horford and Rob, like, yeah, Pertl would give you more insurance if one of those guys gets hurt. And of course, I love Jakob Pertl, but for what you'd have to give up and for the role he would have on top of the fact that he's about to be a free agent and I don't really know if he'd want to stay there given the role he would have where he could probably play more minutes somewhere else and get more money. I just don't think that one's going to happen. As far as the rumor about him in Toronto, I could see that one. Raptors have really wanted a center. Precious has played about 20 games this season. He's played 10 games recently as his minutes have ramped up. I guess we can also do part 75 of John Collins' trade stuff. So we've got this John Collins to the Jazz for Malik Beasley and Jared Vanderbilt thing floating out there right now. And that one is uh, getting my brain moving a little bit because for Utah's sake, it's like, if we assume that Markinen and Walker Kessler is their long-term front court, how does John Collins fit into that? Because in my head, it's like, well, if you want to prioritize Collins as a dive guy, then you probably want maximum spacing or maybe not maximum, but a lot of spacing around him. And Walker Kessler is not going to be a shooter. He's going to do a lot of things well for you, especially as a rim protector, but he's not going to shoot threes like that, right? At the same time, they've run an Olenek, Markin, and Kessler lineup, so maybe they'll just say, screw it, we can figure it out. Even if Collins and Olenek are different play styles and all that. For Atlanta's sake, I mean, specifically for Beasley and Vanderbilt, it would be like, well, Beasley would give them more shooting because they need more shooting. Vanderbilt shoots less threes than Collins does. And, of course, he... Goes for offensive rebounds like a madman. He plays hard on defense and all that nice stuff. He's also quietly a good passer. I don't know if that would pop as much on Atlanta just because they run so much through two dudes, whereas the Jazz are a little more free-flowing, even if Markkanen is still like taking the most shots and stuff. 